All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about STM, scanning, tunneling, microscopy. Um, this is like AFM, atomic force microscopy, is a type of scanning probe microscopy used primarily to uh, determine the topography of a sample, although it can um, give you some other information. And at the end of the video, we'll go over kind of the advantages and disadvantages of STM versus AF AFM and why in some cir circumstances you wa might want to choose one technique over the other. So in STM, um, a small uh, voltage is applied at the tip. So this is the main difference. And instead of actually physically hitting the, the surface as you are in AFM and, and, and relying on this cantilever bending, okay, that's above the tip. Instead, what you're doing here is you are um, relying on electron tunneling. So uh, electrons can travel through space, okay? Tunneling is a through space interaction. When you have uh, two materials very close to one another, okay? So quantum mechanics allows for this to happen. There's an exponential relationship and the probability that will happen decreases exponentially the fur further apart you are. But especially when you have a voltage applied, you can induce this tun tunneling to occur. And what your, your readout now is, is the amount of tunneling current, the, the amount of tunneling electrons that you have going through your tip. That's what you're reading. So if you're very close to your surface, you're gonna have uh, a lot of tunneling current. And so uh, a lot of tunneling current tells, you know, your instrument, hey, I'm close to the surface. Um, and if you're far away from the surface, you're gonna have not that much tunneling current. And so from this information, you can get a topography. So um, yeah, so this is, this is kind of a schematic of, of the tunneling electrons, right? You apply a voltage to this tip and then uh, electrons could, depending upon the voltage, could either be removed or, or actually come from the tip and be added. Depends whether or not you're reducing or oxidizing the surface, you can do both. Um, but typically we're talking about here like one nanometer, getting within one nanometer of the surface in order for this tunneling to become significant enough so that you can detect it. This is what an STM uh, chamber looks like, instrument looks like, very similar to an AFM in terms of its size. You know, it's pretty small. You can build these yourself. Uh, at least in the old days, that's what people used to do. And you have some piezoelectric that's gonna control the XY position of your tip. And that's gonna raster across the surface and get this uh, top topographical information. That's what's shown in pink here. All right, so this is the interesting thing about STM tips is that you can make them extremely sharp. I mean, this is, this is as sharp as you can get, okay? This is theoretically as sharp as you can get. One atom, point, okay? One to two atoms at the end. Um, and the best way to do this is to use a tungsten uh, uh, crystal. So I, I've, I've actually made these tips before uh, you can buy them, but you can make them. They're pretty, pretty easy. I, I made them when I was a graduate student. And what you do is you electrochemically etch a tungsten wire. You take some tungsten wire and you etch it um, inside a, a, um, a, a ring that has some, uh, I was using base, okay? That has like, a, a, like potassium hydroxide dissolved in water. And what happens is you apply very high voltage that tungsten will etch in, in base when you apply high voltage. And then um, you're also generating a bunch of gas during this process because you're splitting water. So you're splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. And once you get enough of this gas building up in this sort of um, suspended, this meniscus, the suspended meniscus is just held by surface tension of this electrolyte, the electrolyte will pop because there's enough there's enough gas buildup. And when that um, electrolyte pops, you know, then your reaction's done and everything shuts down. But it's kind of the combination of the etching and the popping that helps you get this very sharp tip. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. What you do then is you look at, look at your tip under an optical microscope, just a regular mic light microscope, and make sure it looks sharp, at least to the microscope's vision, right? you don't really know if it's one to two atoms thick. In order to do that, you would have to take it to an electron microscope, which we're gonna talk about 
um, at the end of this chapter, but you don't have to do that. You can just guess that it might be one to two atoms sharp. And if it is one to two atoms sharp, you're gonna get beautiful images when you go take the STM. In fact, you're gonna be able to detect individual atoms, which is absolutely insane, right? Um, and so uh, there's, there's two ways that you can do this. One is that if the tunneling current is uh, kept constant, this is called constant current mode. So if you tell the instrument, hey, I want the tunneling current to, to keep constant, what's gonna happen is when you raster across here, the tip is gonna be moved by the piezoelectric up and down, right? Um, so as to maintain a fixed distance of, so that the tunneling current is fixed. And so you end up uh, by, by detecting how much the tip is going up and down, up and down, that's what gets you your topography. Alternatively, you can do what's called constant height mode. Um, and that is just, you keep the height the same as you go across the sample. And now you're looking at the differences in tunneling current. So if you have little tunneling current, you're far away from the sample. And so you know that's a low spot in the sample. If you have a lot of tunneling current, you know you're um, close to the sample. So that's a high spot. And kind of depending on your sample and some, some specifics of the instrumentation, um, sometimes it can be better to use one of these modes versus the other. But yeah, this is the crazy thing. You have atomic level control. You can actually see atoms. Not only can you see atoms, if you apply certain voltages, like a high voltage, for example, you can actually, or if you jam your tip into the surface, you can actually pick up one atom. I mean, this is crazy stuff, guys. You can pick up one atom and put it somewhere else on the surface. And you can make all sorts of weird shapes or do whatever you want to do, right? And so um, you can see, like, these are wave functions, I think, modeled wave functions of uh, electron density inside a corral of... <laughs> of iron atoms. And so just like wickedly awesome stuff you, you, can, you can do with this. You know, maybe this could be used for some sort of quantum computing or some sort of like really, really energy dense or, or, or small data storage system, right? If you know where an atom is and you can control where an atom is, then you can compute with that or you can store information in that, right? At least theoretically. People, people are very interested in that sort of technology. Um, yeah, so, so this, this just really captured people's uh, imaginations. IBM uh, uh, started this, but you know, it's been done a lot of different times making little characters and things like that. Um, so far, mostly just for fun, but again, there are these potential applications that could be truly revolutionary. Um, so typically you start out with, um, when, you're, when you're practicing this STM business, Typically, you start out with a really smooth surface. And um, one of the smoothest surfaces that you can start out with is called highly oriented pyrolytic graphite. You can make these things. They're really smooth uh, pieces of carbon, basically. And uh, once you have this, you know, then you can get these sorts of images. And uh, you know, this is what it looks like. These are individual carbon atoms, guys. And th this is just, you know, in my mind, absolutely mind-blowing. You can see how these atoms are spaced in this hexagon type arrangement. Um, so, you know, I, I have to tell you, the first time that I, <laughs> I did this, it, the STM is not easy to operate. There's a lot, there's a little bit of an art to it. You have to get lucky, you have to have a good tip, you have to have a good sample, you have to have patience, get the right tip voltage and the parameters. And um, the first time, you know, I was really getting into STM, first I wasn't doing atomic resolution, but I decided I wanted to do atomic resolution. So I wanted to do HOPG to practice on to get it. And, uh, you know, it's late at night. I think it's like 2 a.m. in the morning. Why is it late at night? One, because I'm working a long time trying to get this to work. Um, and, and two, late at night, there's not people around walking in the lab, walking in the building. People walking in the building causes the building to vibrate or people walking in the lab, right? And if, if the building's vibrating, that's vibrating the tip. So that's gonna screw up the sensitivity of the, of the experiment, right? And so I remember, you know, the first time I saw atoms on, on uh, HOPG, I, you know, I, I almost wanted to cry because I was just so happy I finally got it, right? Um, and this was an older STM system. Nowadays, it's a little bit easier than what I was dealing with back then. But yeah, it's like a spiritual, it's like, 
I don't know. I felt like it was a spiritual experience. I, I was, I was seeing, I was visualizing atoms as much as a human can actually visualize atoms. There I was. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome stuff. So yeah, if you ever doubt, like, do atoms exist? You know, <laughs> yes. And there are many ways. This is one way that you can actually directly visualize atoms. Um, so looking at AFM versus STM, um, both can be used in, in a vacuum. They can be used in air. You know, that's, that's the most common. So you just have that HOPG sample, for example, or some solid sample, and you're just rastering the tip across it. And that's all there is. It's just a solid. But you can also put, sorry, that said, should say liquid, uh, a liquid on your surface. And uh, then you can, you know, think about how maybe the surface dynamics or structure might change because of the liquid. You can even do something called electrochemical STM, where you have an electrochemical cell and now you're doing some reaction, right? Um, it could be electrochemical. It could also not be electrochemical. It could just be chemical. But you can monitor reaction dynamics on an atomic level, right? You could be scanning your, your tip around while you're doing your reaction. I mean, this is some of the most powerful characterization I think that's possible. It's just, just really amazing stuff. Really hard experiments to do. It takes a lot of patience. Um, but if you're interested in this type of stuff, I'm by no means an expert. I encourage you to, to look at papers about this. It's just fascinating, fascinating stuff. I mean, this is what we chemists always want to do, right? They want to be able to have an atom's eye perspective of reactions. And, and now with this technology, you actually can do that. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, STM does require a conductive sample. AFM doesn't. Obviously, you need a conductive sample for STM because um, you have to establish that tunneling current. That's the whole principle behind it. Uh, AFM physically contacts the specimen. I, I told you that. STM doesn't. So sometimes AFM can be a little bit, if you have a very fragile sample, you know, you might wreck your sample with, with AFM. Um, but the tunneling current and the fact that you can get these tungsten crystals, these tips that are one atom, have a sharpness of one atom, um, means that STM is way more sensitive. Uh, so yeah, you can get down to atom level sensitivities. All right. So yeah, um, look into this scanning probe microscopy business if, if you're interested in it. Uh, just fascinating stuff. 